coming from lovely, scenic, sunny Thailand. What am I doing today? Sniffing paint thinner fumes. <laughs> I'm prepping track. Uh, yesterday was supposed to be paint day. Um, but, you know, the government here in Thailand is like the government in many countries. Uh, anytime you deal with them, you're they're looking at a long waste of time and a lot of inefficiency. So I had signed a form uh, to have a, a Thai lady go take care of some DMV, the motor vehicle stuff for me. And, of course, when she got there, they're like, oh, we need him to show up. We need to see his passport, the original. We need to see this. And so the form was pretty much useless, and I paid her, you know whatever, 30 bucks, a thousand baht <laughs> for nothing because I had to go there, show up and sit and wait for, you know, four hours like you always do at DMV. So today, today on this light and beautiful and lovely day, I get to sniff paint fumes. I actually already uh, wiped these down. They're, they're getting uh, prepped, the uh, tin. And uh, today I'm going to do something different. I'm going to paint these black first so they better match the track and have more of an asphalt look. Um, in my prior videos, you saw that the gray borders come out looking like concrete instead of asphalt. The black borders look like the track, which is to say look like asphalt. And this was a lighter, you know, uh, because you usually only put a mist coat on the, with the textured paint, the, the tan gold uh, color was showing through. So I'm prepping these today. And I'm going to reshoot what's already been painted once with the texture paint. I'm going to shoot everything black today um, that was tan. Uh, and I'm staying with the red and white border curbs, as I mentioned. The red and white curbs are, are I think, look good uh, with the asphalt-looking texture paint. So I just wiped them down with thinner, lacquer thinner, even though this is a big room and I have the fan on. The smell is really strong in here. I'm getting a little bit of a headache. So I'm going to go ahead and knock this out with the um, IPA real quick and then shoot it black. And I will show you the results. I'm not sure I showed this in the first video, so real quick, you just take a cheap microfiber cloth and reuse it over and over again. <laughs> and dunk it, dip it into the IPA. Wipe it liberally on the track. You can see how it's wet. You know, you want to get it wet. Now, this surface is actually pretty rough. It's textured, the um, borders that they have. Uh, the only part that's smooth is this edge here. So give it a good, thick coating, really glob on the IPA on the edge, and then take a green uh, scrubby pad, little scotch bright pad, and rough up that edge to make it the paint adhere to it better give it a better surface. Once again, this is pretty good because it's already textured. There's already a little bit of texture on those pieces. You can sort of see it from there. Well, that's it. Just a quick wipe of IPA uh, after the um, thinner, lacquer thinner, has uh, dried. I'm nice and wet. It does two things. It, it cleans off the residue from the lacquer thinner so that your new paint will adhere. And uh, it also helps uh, get that release agent, the chemical that they put in the plastic to come out of the mold when they're manufacturing it. Just a quick scrub in there. You know, that gets covered up from the curve for the most point, but you know, you're gonna paint it, so prep it. That's it, I just wanted to show you that process. I, I'm not sure I covered that in the last one. All right, so outside in the painting booth, <laughs> which is just the, the box that the uh, Action Slot sent me my, my big package in. I, I got another one coming, by the way, hopefully uh, today or tomorrow. I'm really excited about that uh, package. But anyway, I use that as a uh, prep area. And uh, basically, I shot the edges because I had neglected to shoot the edges, um, you know, the part that I roughed up just now with the lacquer thinner and the scrubby pad and the IPA, I hadn't shot that well enough in the pre-existing corner. So I hit them first with the um, stone texture paint 
uh, just to get the edges because obviously when it's on the track you can see that edge and it was unpainted <laughs> my bad so i hit that first uh give that about five ten minutes to dry it won't be totally dry for you know a couple hours but five or ten minutes and then i can bring it inside and put it back uh, inside on the layout not hooked up uh, you'll see when i shoot later the uh I tore the track apart, as I mentioned. Um, when I put the borders on the hairpins, it didn't fit. So I had to redesign the entire track, get closer to what's going to be hopefully my final layout. Um, I did make some uh, arrangements in the room, moved out the weight bench, moved out my guitars, and I'm going to add another 4x4 table in there. Not sure whether it's going to be an independent little small easy test track that's powered with one transformer or if I'm going to join it to the monster track and make the monster track even bigger. But anyway, just um, step one today was shooting the ones that are already asphalt and getting the edges. That's why they're lined up like that. So now they're, everything is silver. And these are going to be, once this, I take this in in five minutes, uh, these are all going to be spread out and painted black, as I said, to get more of that asphalt look on these uh, tan ones. All right, all right, all right, all right. We now have a black base coat on the inner borders for the hairpins. You can still, I put a pretty light coat on, um, so you can still see the, the silver coming through a little bit. That's fine, because obviously that's not the finished coat. Um, all these are just to, to give it a black base as opposed to a tan base. See, it's a little light over there, so just hit it. There you go. And I did get the edges this time. I I went ahead around and uh, I shot from this side and I went around and made sure I hit all the edges. You know, fool me once, uh, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. So <clears throat> I want to make sure I got the, the pieces that show. Um, and all the borders hit those black and I, when, once this completely dries now because I'm putting paint on top of paint um, I'm not going to wait five minutes for this you know to flash I'm going to let it completely uh, dry all day uh, at least eight hours and once again you can see a little bit showing through but that's okay because that, that the um, the textured paint well, here's the new can right here <laughs> The textured paint can uh, can cover that, um, but just it has to mostly be black instead of mostly being tan uh, for the textured paint to uh, to to look the same as the track. And now it's mostly black. So there you go. And, and am I done? Hell no, because I uh, actually wound up just ordering another hairpin yesterday because I know I'm going to use it somewhere on the track for. You know to turn around somewhere in a tight corner i like i like the radius of the hairpin you know to turn around in a small area so i, I ordered another one and i ordered um two of these inner borders but somebody had cut them and i first saw that about a month ago on action slots website and I was like, it's cut. Like, oh, I don't want to cut. Whatever, it's not the right side, whatever. Then I realized that's exactly what I need because I have the, the two curves, you know, coming out of the bank and then going into the first hairpin. I have the, um, the hairpins uh, into an S configuration. So that's exactly what I need is half of this for one piece, half of that for another piece, half of that for the other piece. And I have four hairpin curves uh, broken up, basically, not not making a hairpin. So exactly what I needed was somebody to cut that right down the line, and they did already. So I ordered both. I am, I'm getting two in for, I don't know, 150 bucks, five bucks. And it's wonderful because it, it solves my problem with the the curves that I don't have uh, as a hairpin, configured as a hairpin, I have them as a as an S-curve to, to turn around in tight corners. So, pretty cool. That's that, you know, once again, I keep saying a month, but that track rubber cleaner and, uh, and the borders, these, these borders here I'm painting, came way faster than a month. So, I'm hoping two weeks, two weeks, three weeks, uh, I'll get the additional split borders and I'll be out here painting them black again, letting them, you know, completely cure and then hitting them with the 
uh, metallic paint. If I need to get another can of metallic paint, I'll get another can of metallic paint. It's throw whatever, five bucks, six bucks, whatever it is. I, I, I can't even tell you what I paid for it, but I got that, that I can order easy enough off my local uh, supplier. So there's the base coat. I guess I'm going to let this sit here and dry all day uh, and really, you know, set in. And then I'll put paint, more paint on top of it of a different color, the silver paint. And um, I might hit this one more time. There's still a little too much. You see the difference between that and that. Um, I probably need to hit this with one more coat. So I'll let this flash dry, you know, 10 minutes. And then I'll hit it with one more coat of black just to make sure. Even though ultimately that's the same color going over it. I think it will look more like the track if I hit it with one more coat of black. These, these, uh, these two here. So, all right, cool. That's it. That's once again beautiful, sunny day in in uh, in Thailand. It's gorgeous here. Sun is shining. It's warm. It's tropical paradise. Birds chirping and all that good shit. And I'm here, cleaning track and painting track. Yeah, nothing, nothing I'd rather do. Well, I told you when I was out painting that the uh, track is torn apart. <laughs> Basically, what I did was separate all the curves. I took away this part, the uh, little configuration I was talking about, the S-Corp. You know, disconnected that curve, the R2. Um, the straight, of course, is staying, but I did take out some pieces of track that were dirty. You see, this is pretty road hard, put away wet. And uh, this time, <laughs> when I build it, I'm, I'm literally gonna examine every piece and see if it's good track or bad track. If it's bad track, I'm gonna go to my <laughs> stack of spares, which is mainly track from Jeff, which is in better shape than the, the stuff that came from the set. So some of the stuff from the set came clean. Um, some of it is still, you know, it's got some marks on it and things like that. So literally made the best track win. I'm going to go piece by piece when I start putting this thing back together, taking the best pieces I have. It just makes sense. That was actually a suggestion from one of our viewers, uh, Mark, I believe. He's like, yeah, just replace the track, you friggin' idiot. And he didn't say that. He's a nice guy, but, you know, whatever. Yes, I, of course, I should use the best track that I have. I have all this damn track sitting there, my big stack of curves and a big stack of... And then over here, I, so I have original curves from the original layout. So um, this time, <laughs> when I build it, I will put the, the, the best track I have. So you can see I basically disconnected all the S-curves here, disconnected the S-curve there, um, disconnected the hairpins. I even um, took those out because I am going to super glue them, as I talked about. You can see how they're just, even not attached to the track, you can see how that chicane wants to separate because of that. The, the, on that side it doesn't have pins. You see how easy that comes away? Because it only has the one tab. So, you know, you need you need four tabs. <laughs> you need two on this side, like that, and two on that side. And as I showed you in the video when I was painting them, you know, see? see how that comes apart, how easy that is to move? So yeah, those need to be sanded down so the seam is as narrow as possible. Um, you know, more like this, more like a stock electric strike you see how those two are together that's how I need to make those two hairpins look and to do that I'm probably going to defile and sand uh, the two pieces of track so there's no gap and then use super glue and that's fine because I'm even thinking about um, super gluing the barriers fences I call them into the borders because like they're not I'm not going to take them out like once they're painted um, which I don't know why I didn't paint those two they should be out there getting black. Wow, okay, I missed I missed two. I'll, I'll go grab those and paint them black. But once those are painted uh, silver, oh, you know, once the black dries, and I put the uh, barriers, they call them, I uh, fence back in, they have a habit of coming out. You know, one of the first times I was running the little white Camaro around the track, the, the end piece, it seems like, this, this part down here, always seems to come out that doesn't hold as well as the middle uh, I'm gonna super glue it I'm gonna super glue the curbs in I'm gonna super glue the hairpins together to the chicane because once I get this next configuration 
Uh, that's pretty much it. You see, I disconnected the bridge here. No more bridge. That's sitting there in the middle. I disconnected, you know, that basically I took all the curves away because I'm going to use that somewhere in the layout. I'm going to use those two somewhere in the layout. I'm going to use this curve somewhere in the layout. And I'm going to use the bank curve, of course, somewhere in the layout. Where? I don't know yet. I don't know. It's going to take some time, some planning. I mentioned the 80-20, 80% of the thing, roughly. I'm not going to be to the exact inch or centimeter, but roughly 80% will be track. And 20% will be uh, people, buildings, you know, stuff, the bridge, the Dunlop Bridge, um, et cetera, et cetera. You know, the little cars. I got some more cars on the way. I bought some cars yesterday. So, you know, I have a little parking area. Um, I don't know, picnic area, whatever. We'll see. We'll see what I see as time goes along. But basically the layout, the new layout um, is going to start with the curves. Once I figure out where the curves are going to go, I can fill in in the middle with the 22, uh, uh, 22 and a half degree radius, which is a a long radius like i said that's almost a straight it's an s curve but you see it's very gradual whereas when you put these together in, a, in an s curve it's a it's a wicked change of direction you're you're actually going straight but way dropped way down here it's it's a it's a big you know connection between here and here that's why these are so valuable and i bought um i think two more pieces two more pieces or four more pieces i bought of the hairpin and unfortunately they're that type that with the separator they go yeah they're, they're that kind they're not this kind you can see there's a much better seam on the normal one with all the tabs in it this has the four tabs and the four tabs is what makes a nice tight connection. Why they did the chicane that way, I have no idea. So I got, I believe, four more pieces like that coming. And same thing, I'll super glue them. I don't, I don't care. I'm okay with that. Um, I'm not afraid of commitment. <laughs> so um, that's it. I'm going to grab these two pieces, take off the fences, take out the curves, go paint them black with the others, let it sit and dry. And then uh, either tonight, I'll shoot them with the uh, textured paint or tomorrow. Uh, that's it for today. Nice, easy day. Nice, relaxing day. A little prep, a little painting, nothing, nothing too strenuous. And then yeah, I took the, the track apart this morning. I'm going to take all the twigs, my future trees, put them back in the bag because I don't know where they're going to go until the track. The track gets laid down first and then the scenery fills in around it. But I have that rough 80-20 uh, in my mind now. Um, once again, I'm waiting on the distribution block. The wires are here. The spade connectors are here. Right there near the little baby wipes. And uh, yeah, I'm literally going to go, as I lay each piece of track, I'm going to go piece by piece, examine it. Do I have a better piece of track? Are the connections tight? You know, with the little screwdriver thing I showed you, pushing down the tab. Um, you know, is the fit good? I'm not going to super glue that track like where that goes into that i'm not super gluing any of that because i do need to take it apart at some point or you know remain flexible with how i put it whatever things change like i said there's no such thing as a final layout in my opinion uh but the things like the the hairpin turns those could be super glued the um fences inside you know this is staying like this is always this is a piece i'm going to use so there's no problem see how loose that is it's already come up there's no problem uh, gluing that curb in and gluing the fence in because it, it's, it's, to me it's permanent. That, that's a three-piece set, the curb, the barrier fence, and, and the border all go together. They're all going to work as a unit wherever I put them on the track. So that's it. That's what's going on with the racetrack. All, all torn apart. I can't run my cars. Wah. Uh, I even put the jump on. Late last night I took the jump and um you know put it here to to try it but um i didn't do it i went and started taking the track apart first so yeah it is what it is i'll, I'll jump later all right so a quick sanding with the emery board if you don't have one of these pick them up they're really good for some quick sanding jobs exactly like this you can see the gap now is minimal it looks like a normal track i just have the uh, ice cream stick in there 
to keep that those rails straight when they're joining they were they were warping a little bit when I was gluing this together so that's just a placeholder to make the, the rail stay straight um, when I did have some interference problems on the track before it was where the hairpins were joining so I'm making sure like I said I'm going over every single connection this time so if you look at that new gap which is drying with super glue and you look at the existing gap you can see light through there you see so it definitely benefits from being sanded down and uh, super glued together. Okay, the sun was super hot today. Um, so I was able to uh, go ahead and shoot the silver over the black. Uh, it came out good, it matches. Uh, that's been super glued now. I put a couple of people up on the bridge and glued them in, super glued day. Uh, got all this laid out so I can see what I'm missing with any parts or anything on the curves um, I'm, I'm going with that. That's the final thing is the red and white curb so uh, End of a successful day got a bunch of painting done Tracks all in section so I can evaluate it. Uh, everything looks good and that, That's it for today the end of a successful day